Vixen Gamer here, and you already know the drill. 4.5 Spiral Abyss. Let's just get this over with.
emergency. Now you shall perish. And that is it for my Spiral Abyss run. So, um, well, there is a lot to unpack here because there is a lot of uh, new stuff and there's a lot of old stuff too. So, yeah, it's really a mix and hybrid between 
the two of new and old. But there is definitely a new enemy in the floor 12, chamber 3, and I will be talking about that. So, yeah. But, anyways, uh, well, enough about me rambling on. I have to show you guys what I'm talking about. So, I'm gonna be going into, um, uh, well, minute detail on floor 11 and floor 12. If you want a more better explanation, I will be doing the commentary video on floor 11, floor 12, where I go into greater depth into these floors and talk about my tips and strategies. But for now, I'm just going to be talking about, well, the bare minimum for floor 11 and floor 12 because, well, I need to show you guys my builds. So yeah, but um, here is floor 11. So it's not really that bad for the first time in forever. Um, well, they did it back then, but well, uh, now they did it but <laughs> it took them forever. There is no monolith floor. Yeah, no monolith floor on floor 11? What? Yeah, you wouldn't believe it, but it's not here. I mean, look at that. Remaining challenge time. Yeah, not monolith HP remainder. So yeah, it's really, really weird. But um, just like every floor 11, it's pretty easy if you have the right teams. And plus, besides, they give you a GL damage bonus, so you could just literally run any GL team and you're, like, blitzing through the whole floor. I mean, look at this. It's just not really that bad. So, shrooms, hilly churls. Oh, the beasts are here, which are new enemies, by the way, which are from the uh, Liwe map, the new Liwe map. Um, the annoying fanged beasts are back. You know how annoying these boys are, the Sumeru beasts, where they just put up a lot of crap. They do a lot of damage. They don't get staggered. Yeah, you know the drill. If you have fought these things before, then you should be fine. And then you have the... Well... These things. These things! Oh boy! Everyone hates these things. It is really, really bad. <laughs> but, again, if you have teams that can compensate for it, which uh, is basically just anything that reacts to Hydro, then you should be fine. Even though these guys are extremely tanky, they are tanky, tanky boys. Uh, if you have high damaging teams, well, like a Quicken team or a Aggravate, Hyper Bloom, Vaporize, or, uh, well, Freeze, but just don't make it go Berserk, you should be fine. And then the second half is just Mechas. Well, if you know how to deal with Mechas, then you know uh, that it's pretty easy to deal with them. So yeah, that's Floor 11, basically. And that's just the spark notes version and now i'm gonna be talking about floor 12 so here we go so floor 12 is pretty interesting because we have well a pyro abyss mage which is easy pretty easy to beat a breacher who is pretty easy to beat and then you have two operatives yeah two fatui operatives they have really high hp pools and they love to teleport around and do ridiculous things but again if you have a good team you should be fine and second half, well, Jade Plume Terror Shroom. He's easy as crap. Just bring Pyro Electro. <laughs> For Chamber 2, um, I would say this is probably the hardest chamber. Yeah, this is the hardest chamber. Because you have to deal with annoying specters who love to fly around and love to waste your time uh, waiting to explode once their HP reaches zero. You have Whopper Flowers, which love to dig underground. And then you have these husks where you can't bring any shield characters. Yes, you can't bring any shield characters. You can, but just don't make just don't make them hit you when you have a shield. Or else, well, they retaliate with their own special mechanics. So yeah. Um, you can't bring someone like Vaiju, who like periodically has a shield and sometimes he doesn't. So yeah, you can bring him. But as long as you don't get hit when you have a shield up. You should be fine, but you are going to get hit anyway. It's Spiral Abyss, so yeah. Um, for your safety, you should not bring a shielder for these serpents and husks because these things are really annoying if you do bring a shield. And we have Mechanical Array. He's pretty easy too. Just nuke it down and then it just goes to its second phase. You find the glowing thingy and then you defeat the glowing robot and then you just finish it off. Pretty easy, right? <laughs> and then we have... Chamber 3, which is also pretty easy. We have the Icewind Sweet Dirge of Copelia, which is the animal version, not the cryo version. So you can basically nuke it down. Pretty easy, right? And then we have the veteran Archimedic Enhancer Mech. You know what this thing is? This thing is a local legend. Yeah, for the first time, for the very first time, I'm pretty sure these operatives aren't um, local legends. 
Um, but if they are, then, uh, well, correct me if I'm wrong. But, yeah. Uh, this thing, this dude, is a, is a local legend. It's literally a local legend. You can fight right now in Fontaine. It literally has the same mechanics as that local legend. Where it puts up a shield, and you have to break the shield to do damage. And also, it has that shockwave attack where... It basically um, gives you a mechanic where you can jump and then you can just do plunging attacks on it. So yeah, it's pretty much unchanged. It's unchanged. So yeah, um, if you want to have your practice at it, make sure you fight it in Fontaine. It's a local legend. So yeah. So there is your synopsis on 411 and 412. I mean, it's not that bad, but as long as you bring the right amount of characters basically on Chamber 2 of floor 12 don't bring a shielder and then on chamber 3 bring a geo character anyone who could take care of shields you should be fine so yeah well anyways now it's time to talk about the teams i used and well it's no surprise here i brung the unga bunga team the team that could destroy basically any abyss ever the hyper bloom team obviously and then the navia team because i love to use navia like no I'm not joking. Like, I love Navia's damage output. So yeah, that's my uh, reasons for my teams. But uh, let's talk about the builds first. So here we go. Here is the uh, Chamber 1 team or the first half team. This is Raiden Shogun. So Raiden Shogun, um, she hasn't changed that much. Uh, she has crit rate, crit damage, 300 ER, electro damage. You know, the works, the wazoo. And then we have her weapon, which is the Engulfing Lightning, which is her best weapon, her must run. Um, her free to play weapon is the catch. So if you are down to fish um, for your uh, weapon, then you can do so. It is her best weapon. So you can just slap it on her and she performs fine too. But Engulfing Lightning is her premium weapon and her best weapon um, to use. So yeah, that's why I gave it to her. As for artifact set, I gave her four piece album of severed fate. This is her best uh, artifact set for support, DPS, and sub DPS right in, and she is all three combined. So, yeah, that's why I ran this set. This set is just way too good. No other set you would run on right in, to be honest. As for constellations, I have read C2. C2 is just way too broken, so that is why I got her to C2. But she doesn't need constellations to be good. She could, you literally run her at C0 and she nukes everything. But that C2 though, you get 60% uh, defense shred. So yeah, um, broken, absolutely broken. And then you have the uh, electro increase on your elemental burst. So you could get more uh, stacks on your elemental burst with electro characters. And then also it boosts um, the uh, stacks as well if you do have other party members too. So basically she's able to get her maximum damage on her burst. That's basically what I'm talking about. And then as for talents, I have 10, 10, 10. Really, really good um, character. That is why I triple crowned her. I use her way too much. Like in every single video, I use Raiden. So yeah, Raiden, uh, OP. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Uh, probably one of the best characters in the game. <laughs> and next up, we also have arguably one of the best characters in the game too. Nahida, our Dendro goddess. So Nahida here hasn't changed either. High EM, crit rate, crit damage is pretty average. She doesn't need ER. Uh, she has some standard dendro damage. Yep. As for weapon, I have a thousand floating dreams. This is her best weapon and her premium weapon that you can get um, by summoning. Uh, same with the engulfing lightning. You could just get that from summoning. But um, for her free to play weapon, you can use the magic guide, which is a three star weapon that you can slap on the Hita. Its passive is literally just deal more damage if the opponent is affected by pyro and electro and guess what elements combo well with those dendro so yeah um it is a really good free to play uh weapon but a thousand fooling dreams is her premium weapon so that is just what i gave her as for artifact set i have four piece deep wood memories um it is her best artifact set but if someone else is running deep wood memories so you could run gilded dreams which is also her best artifact set so basically Run Deepwood if Nahida is your main Dendro applicator. Run Gilded Dreams if she is not. Um, that's basically it. But since Nahida is my main Dendro applicator, I ran Deepwood Memories. So yeah. As for Constellations, I have her at C2. Uh, her C2 is just way too good to pass up. So that is why I have her C2. I mean, look at this. 
crit rate, crit damage up the wazoo, baby. And also the increased defense on um, the Electro Dendro applicating. So yeah, it's really, really broken. And you get the best of both worlds because you can do Hyper Bloom, which basically increases the crit rate, crit damage. And you could get a quick and aggravate reaction because of the Electro Dendro, which means that, well, Nahida on Hyper Bloom is literally her best team. So yeah. And also, this basically becomes adds 1, which basically comes to 2. So Shrine of Maya, basically, you get the full passive on all of them. As long as you bring one of them on the team, instead of bringing two. So yeah, really, really good um, constellations. And as for talents, I have 6, 10, 10. Um, I don't have her as a main DPS, so that's why I don't have her at like level uh, 10 um, normal attack talent. But I did uh, crown these two, which is her main bread and butter. So yeah. Um, I use Nahida a lot, so expect more Nahida in the future. So yeah. There's Nahida. Um, again, I'll say it again. Arguably one of the best characters in the game. So yeah. And next up, we have arguably one of the best Hydro characters in the game. Yeah! Woohoo! That's like a, a triple whammy right there on the team. We have Farida, our Hydro Archon, quote unquote. <laughs> but um, Farida, uh, I see here. She has max HP, crit, crit, crit damage, ER, so she gets her burst back instantly. Yep, uh, your basic Farina build. As for weapon, I have Splendor of Tranquil Waters. This is her best weapon. Um, it's her premium weapon, um, which is why I just slapped it on her. Uh, as for free to play options that you can use, you can use the fishing um, sword that you can get by fishing in um, Fontaine. You could just slap that on her, that works well. You can also give her the Festering Desire, which is a 1.2 weapon in the Dragon Spine update. But um, that is only for true OG players. If you're not an OG player, then I guess your second best option is the the fishing, the fishing sword. So yeah. Um, but Tranquil Waters is her premium weapon, which is why I just slapped it on her. As for artifact set, I have four piece golden troop. This is her best artifact set for sub DPS Farina. And also support Farina, um, if you don't believe it. So yeah, um, Golden Troop just basically increases the damage on her elemental skill damage. And guess what she uses a lot? Her elemental skill. So yeah, it combos really well with her kit. Um, if you are running a sub DPS Farina. Because sub DPS Farina is just way too busted. Way too broken. Um, you can also run Millilith. That also works too for support Farina. You can run Oceans uh, if you are running a healer Farina. She has so many different co possible combinations that to list that I can't even like talk about it. And as long as you have her at C6, that is for the Mega Whales out there, you can give her Hunters. Yeah, she works well with Hunters um, if you are, if you do have her at C6. So yeah, um, keep that in mind. As for constellations, I have her at C2. Um, C2 is just Mega Support Farina. Um, action. If you are trying to run her as a support, you definitely want to get her C2, but she works well at C0 anyway, so you don't need the constellations. But C2 definitely helps her a lot, and it makes her like one of the best Hydro supports in the entire game. As you see here, she gets in accelerated uh, burst, um, burst buffs. Basically, every time you uh, lose or gain HP, you get 250% faster um, fanfare points. And then the more fanfare you have uh, overflowing the fanfare limit, the higher your HP goes, which is really, really good. And also her C1 increases the fanfare limit too. And she gets 150 base fanfare for it. So yeah, that basically what I'm trying to say is with C2, you're basically able to get the maximum amount of damage bonus. So yeah. And as for talents, 6, 10, 10, had to crown these two talents. Definitely a really good support and sub DPS, which is why I just... Uh, crown the these two talents. It's basically the same as Nahida. I just crown these two because it's her bread and butter. And she doesn't use normal attacks that often. Unless I get her at C6, which is not gonna happen. But yeah. But there is Farina. Um, the, one of the best Hydro characters in the game, if not the best Hydro character. And last but not least, on the first half team, we have Baiju, aka uh, one of the good Dendro healers uh, in the game. Or, well, I could say this, the best dungeon healer in the game. So yeah. Um, well, Baiju here has not changed either. 40k HP. High ER. Um, basically, that's it. 
As for weapon, I have Prototype Amber. His best weapon is definitely his premium weapon. But this is his best free-to-play weapon. Yeah, because all you have to do is just craft it, and that's it. Yep. You need you just need the billets. That's all you need. You need the uh, Catalyst billets. Craft it, and there you go. You, you literally got one of his best free-to-play weapons. <laughs> it also combos really well, too, because he uses Elemental Burst, and he gets energy back for his Elemental Burst. And guess what he loves to do a lot? His Elemental Burst. So, yeah, it's really, really busted. As for artifact set, I have deep wood memories. Um, I usually go off from time to time on um, Baiju because I run Baiju on other teams besides Nahida comps. So uh, I didn't bother changing the set. And also, uh, it's to prove that uh, well, just deep wood could basically uh, take care of the abyss. But yeah, I just run deep wood on Baiju because I use them on other teams besides Farina. And I don't want to bother uh, swapping these sets because I build every character in the game, if you don't believe it. So yeah, every character on my roster has a set. So yeah. As for constellations, I have C0. He doesn't need constellations to be good. His main primary role is a healer. So yeah, um, no constellations. As for talents, I have 6, 6, 7. Yeah, I'm slowly trying to level this up to level 10 because that is his bread and butter too. Because... His burst gives him everything he possibly wants. So yeah, that's basically it. Baiju, best Dendro healer in the game, definitely. And here we have the second half team. So look no further than our Geo Queen, Navia, the best Geo character in the game. Um, one of the best Geo characters because Zhongli exists. But um, she shares a spot with Zhongli. But uh, Navia is definitely the best Geo DPS in the game. No doubt about it. So yeah. As for Navia, she has high attack, um, crit rate, crit damage, ER. She doesn't need that much ER because, well, she gets her particles herself anyway thanks to her burst in E, which is a lot. So she's able to spam it, basically. As for her weapon, I have Verdict. This is her best weapon. <laughs> no doubt about it. Um, if you are uh, trying to get a different weapon, you can run the Serpent Spine, which is uh, her best 4-star weapon. If you can't run that, you could just run any other uh, DPS Claymore out there. So yeah. Um, Verdict is definitely her best weapon because, well, Crystallize equals skill damage. Basically, that's it. Uh, as for artifacts, I have Nighttime Whispers in the Echoing Woods. This is definitely her best set. There's no other set you would run. Um, if you are running a budget set, you can run Geo, two-piece Geo, two-piece attack. But that means you have to run the Geo domain, which and that domain kind of sucks. So yeah, um, just farm for Nighttime Whispering Woods so you can just get uh, songs, artifacts, and just slap it on like Chevrus or something. So yeah, um, Nighttime Whispering Woods is definitely her best set. As for Constellations, I have Red C0. She doesn't need Constellations to be good, but it does kind of help her a lot because it decreases cooldown on Burst. This increases the crit rate on E, so basically it becomes consistent on uh, crit damage. But she doesn't need Constellations, again, because her damage is already way too good enough. And as for Talents, I have 9, 6, uh, or 9, 10, 6. So yeah, um, definitely I leveled this up first because that's where all her damage comes from, her E. Her normal attack, I'm trying to get to level 10, but right now I'm trying to farm for Nouvellet artifacts. So yeah, I can't level this up to level 10 just yet. So, uh, well, it's just going to be stuck at level 9. But she still does way too much damage for her own good. So yeah, I'm definitely not mad about it. Um, but yeah, there's Navia, our Geo Queen. And here we have our Geo King, <laughs> Zhongli. So Zhongli hasn't changed one bit. Um, he has high HP, like he always does. Crit rate, crit damage, yeah. She, he has high HP and crit rate, crit damage, because I made him a sub DPS support hybrid. Because his Q just does way too much damage. His damage scaling on his Q is absolutely ridiculous, so I had to take advantage of it. Um, as for his weapon, I have Black Tassel. This is his best weapon. I'm not joking. <laughs> his best free, or his best premium weapon is the Staff of Homa. So if you are going to be running, well an even bigger sub DPS Zhongli, then you could just run Staff of Homa. But Black Tassel is his best free to play weapon. It's a three star weapon, literally. It's passive doesn't even matter because it has high HP. So yeah. As for his artifact set, I have four piece Tenacity of the Millet. This is his best support set um, because well, elemental skill and he increases the uh, 
attack of party members and also increases shield strength, which is pretty nice. So yeah, um, definitely Zhongli's best support set. But if you are going to be running another set, basically a sub DPS Zhongli, if you are um, trying to uh, go for the burst damage, you could go for two piece burst, two piece geo. That works too. So basically two piece noblesse, two piece geo. So yeah, you can just run that. But Tenacity is his best support set. As for Custlations, I have him at C0. He doesn't need Custlations to be good because what is he? A shield bot. So yeah. As for talents, I have 6, 10, 6. Yeah, um, literally you only have to level this up and he becomes a god. So yeah, uh, Zhongli, best shielder in the game. Also our Geo King <laughs> and Geo God. Next up, we have our chef of one min restaurant, Zhongling. So Zhongling, uh, well, she still is uh, the best pyro sub DPS in the game because no other character is like her. So yeah. Uh, if you don't know what I mean, I will link a video at the outro. Um, just watch it. But uh, here is Zhongling. As you see here, crit rate, crit damage, ER, pyro damage. Your typical uh, stats for a sub DPS. As for a weapon, I have the catch, which is her best weapon. If you already have Raiden and Raiden carries the catch, you could just give her like Dragon's Bane or something and she performs fine too. So yeah, as long as you have high ER, crit rate, crit damage, she should be fine. So... Yeah, but the catch is her best weapon if you did manage to give Raiden something else, so yeah. As for Artifact Set, I have 4 piece Emblem of Severed Fate, her best sub DPS set for sure because it increases the burst damage, so yeah. As for Constellations, I have her at C6, she is a day 1 character so getting her C6 isn't really an issue since uh, I did play as on day 1. You also get her for free anyway. And you could get her in the shop with uh, your glitters. Um, so yeah, if you have leftover glitters and she uh, appears in the shop, make sure you grab some copies so you can get her to C6. And as for talent, I have 6, 9, 11. I'm trying to level this up to level 13, which I am very close to doing. So yeah, but again, I will say it. I'm grinding for Nouvellet artifacts, so I can't really do that. So yeah. But there is Xiongling. Um, still the best pyro sub DPS in the game. And here, we have the best pyro support in the game. And also, one of the best buffers in the game, Bennett. So yeah, uh, Bennett hasn't changed that much either. High HP, high ER, um, the works. As far as weapon, we have the Skyward Blade. This is his best weapon if you are going for, well, the general support weapon for Bennett. Which is, if you want high base attack with uh, ER, then this is his best weapon. But if you're going for it strictly on mega buff mode, you can go Aquilia Favonia. Even though its uh, substat is physical damage bonus, it has the highest base attack out of any sword in the game. So you can literally slap this on Bennett and he becomes good. Just make sure you compensate for the uh, energy recharge if you are going for Aquilia Favonia. But um, besides that, uh, Skyward Blade, you could get it right now actually um, if you are going for the Monstat banner. But um, I suggest that you save your primos because um, phase two is really stacked. So yeah, and also Arlen Sino is coming out. So if you want Arlen Sino, then uh, skip on the Monstat banner. But Skyward Blade is his best uh, premium weapon. Um, for his best four star weapon, if you are an OG, you can run Festering Desire, which is his best uh, four star free to play weapon. If you can't do that, then you could just run the standard basic Favonius sword. Yeah, the Favonius sword works well on him and all he needs is just ER. So yeah, that's basically it So yeah, it's either you run Skyward, you run Aquilia for buffs, you run Festering if you are a free-to-play OG Or you run Favonius sword because you have nothing else. So yeah, that's basically his uh, weapons As for artifact set, I have four piece noblesse literally his best set like literally no other set you would run on uh, Bennett Besides Noblesse, because it combos well with this burst, uh, buffing the attack of all party members. So yeah. As for Constellations, I have him at C5. I still don't want to get him at C6, despite me running Ga Ming. Yeah, Ga Ming, you can actually have a reason to get C6 now because of Ga Ming. Ga Ming literally needs uh, Bennett C6. You can do that if you want, but um, you don't need to. 
<laughs> and that's because I run Bennett on a uh, Kuching team. And Kuching, well, you already know her. She gets overridden on her elemental skill. So yeah, I don't want to get him C6 just yet. And besides, Gaming is fine without it. Because all he needs is just big damage. And he does like, what, like 200k per E. So yeah, um, he's really, really busted anyway. So don't really need the C5. Or C6, my bad. But uh, if you are trying to get Gaming to his maximum potential, you can get him at C6. But... Um, if you want to run Bennett on a universal buffer team, basically have everyone run Bennett, then you could run the uh, C5 um, for Bennett instead of C6. So yeah. And as for talents, 6, 9, 13. Level this up to level max because, well, I have to, right? <laughs> it's Bennett, for crying out loud. So yeah. Um, there is Bennett. Uh, really a carry, healer, hybrid, uh, buffer, best pyro support in the game, if not... Um, one of the best. So yeah, that's basically it for my teams. And that is it for this Spiral Abyss video. So yeah, uh, if you do like this video and enjoy this uh, Spiral Abyss video, make sure to leave a like down below. And also subscribe to the channel if you are new and turn on notification bells if you do subscribe. So not miss out on a single Genshin upload that I do. I upload Genshin videos, well, at least once a week. So uh, yeah. Um, if you do like and subscribe, by the way, um, you are supporting the channel. Thank you guys so much for supporting. Um, any amount of support is greatly appreciated. Helps me fuel um, my brain to make more Genshin content because I love making Genshin content. So having your guys' backs and supporting me is really greatly appreciated. I can't thank you guys enough. So thank you guys for the support if you do like and subscribe. And also comment down below, what do you think of this Spiral Abyss? You think it's easy? You think it's hard? Uh, what are your teams you ran on Spiral Abyss? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, thank you guys for watching this Spiral Abyss video. And I'll see you guys in the next Genshin video.